Hey guys, this is Coach Chris. Welcome to my channel where we break down international level fights for strategies and tactics that you can use in your own matches. Today we're doing kind of a Christmas special. I'm breaking down my own fight from 2016. This is the Olympic qualification tournament. Um, I was the this is was being held in uh, Manila, and luckily we got the hosting country. Um, I'm against. Uh, I don't know if you can see his name. His name's Bari Tanrikulu. Uh, I, at the time, I actually didn't know who this guy was, but if you Google search this guy and search him with Taekwondo, he's went to three Olympic Games. He's went to seven World Championships. He went to three Olympic Games, took silver, World Champion. He's been to seven World Championships. That's more than twice the number I've been to. Um, he's been to University Ad once, or twice, excuse me. He's won once. I've only been to University Ad once. Um... Well, so anyway, at the time, I think this guy's most of this guy's fights were uh, in welterweight division. If I had just Google searched, I would have found all this information right away. Um, what had happened was we got kind of the list of, of who's going to be where. And in my division, I spent, I think I spent the month scouting everyone in my division. There's supposed to be only be, I scouted like the top eight people in my division and I was pretty confident that if I if I fought anyone except for China I would have made it in um, China would have been a really tough match I was not sure at the at this point in time if I could beat China because his front leg Sen's front leg was crazy good uh, the next highest person uh, was Kazakhstan and I scouted to him and I locked a lot of his fights I looked at what situation he likes to throw what um, so I had all of that figured out I th and then when I looked at my division two days before, it set up my first fight was Palestine, who wasn't even registered initially. And I was like, that's kind of weird. I don't know anyone out of Palestine. So it might have been that Palestine didn't have anywhere else they felt like they could win. So they just kind of threw in a throw a throwaway, which is what I assumed what had happened. I didn't know I was fighting a guy who had been to the Olympics three times. Um, so my first, I end up, obviously, I end up losing this fight. Uh, but my first error is not taking advantage of the information available to me. So if you guys are at home and you're feeling confident enough in yourself uh, before the tournament, if you're feeling nervous, don't Google your guys, just focus on your own game. But if you're feeling pretty in control about it already, uh, I would suggest Googling your fighters and seeing if you can come up with anything. Maybe it's a fight from three years ago. Maybe it's a fight from two years ago. Obviously, the more recent, the better. That'd be my uh, first suggestion. So I didn't know I was fighting this guy. Um, my fight style is I kind of score a lot of points. I'm very, I have a left leg. I don't fight anymore, so I don't really care if I tell you guys. My left leg in the back is, um, I have a, I would say a decent off the line left that, uh, that I can pretty heavily rely on. And on my right side, I like fighting with that leg in front. I usually fight southpaw. That's more of my more dynamic stuff. Um, I like to score from range. Sometimes I'll score in close, but generally it's, I score on the follow-up or defensively with my right leg. Um, besides that, I also punch. And so those are my weapons kind of going in. And I'm fighting this guy blind. Like, I don't know who this guy is. I'm assuming it's a throwaway from Palestine. This guy used to be from Turkey. And I think for this tournament, um, this is probably his last Olympic run. I think it was his last Olympic run, actually. He, um, I, I don't know. Who this, I don't, yeah, I don't really know this guy. So... I'm going to break down my fight where I feel like I could have improved or done better and um, share that knowledge with you guys. Hopefully not embarrass myself too much. Leg. Kind of flashy sitting on his front leg a lot. So... Um, this is kind of weird because I haven't watched I, I don't watch, I don't like live in this fight, you know, like I don't watch this super often. I watch this every now and then if I want to remiss, which is like once a year maybe. Um, so the reason for this cut is because he's obviously showing a lot of front leg here. And then I cut and I try to follow up because I want to shut down that initial front leg maybe counter and then follow up, which is generally, um, generally what I do in in most matches because most people I fight in this division or, you know, heavyweights are not smaller than me. He is, as you guys can tell, he's like about an inch shorter than me. And I also apologize about the quality. This is the best quality that was uploaded. So this is what we're using. Um, 
I don't normally fight people shorter than me, so it's a little bit awkward. I usually fight people who are taller than me, so I clinch, I throw that front leg up a lot, fall with my back leg, and then um, see what's open. In offensive posture, which is decent. Changing targets there would be great. Trying to force him into my front leg. Get a good punch. I think here I should try a head kick. No. He started in his back. I'll try a head kick here. Short head. So, to go backwards on myself, I think, given his um, short choppiness going backwards and then coming forward again, I would recommend to myself to uh, do a shortcut and then immediately start looking for, like, start flipping to the head to um, cut off. Initially, if you do a shortcut, it eats this distance here. Uh, let me see if I can find a good tool. It, it kind of, um, if you do a shortcut, Obviously, he can't come in. And if you start flicking to the head and you land slightly forward, he's you land slightly forward, that means you're taking ring space away from him. So there's you're slowly, slowly eating away at the space he can move. And then he has to try and time when he's coming in to make sure he evades the head kick. So in this little instance, what I have him here, and, oh, and I'm pressuring him, I feel like a good alternative would have been for me to shortcut and then shortcut and head, look for a head kick. Look for a head kick. And so at this, also at this stage with the Dado scoring system, it's a lot of people score um, on the way in or uh, defensively. So part of the game plan is to try and get him to run into the kick. I think this may have been the first ter first or second tournament where they brought up the Gen 2s. You guys can see the little, or Gen 3s, the, the little waveness going on. I think those are the Gen 2 da Dados, Gen, Gen 2, Gen 3, something like that. But... Our headgear sensors are... I think this is one of the first tournaments to use a headgear sensor. Forward a bit. Right here would have been a good, actually. Looking at it right now. Right here would have been great. After he's done, he gets up. Going right here would have been a good um, timing reset kind of attack. Because, that you know, the momentum's a little bit slow. Before this, all of the attacks have been kind of like nothing really too blitzy. And so I think right here, if I were to have blitzed right here, that would have been a pretty decent opportunity. Either to the backside or with a strong cut. Um, easier, it would have been a good time to get an easy advantage either in terms of ring space or by scoring. That was so. That was um, him being ahead of me, actually. So in this little scenario, a so missed opportunity for the timing reset. Fusion, reset, and I think so. Right here, the reason I'm saying he got me is because he he slid back, and then I adjusted and I tried to go long, and he cut it off by going short. So if I were one step ahead of him and I did an axe kick or something short, and if I said okay, he went back. He's going to think I'm going along, so he's going to come in, and then I go for the headshot. That that's that'd be me being one step ahead of him. But in this, instant, in this instance, he was one step ahead of me. And like, granted, it doesn't. Um, I don't get anything, and I don't lose anything. But he's able to come back and reset the ring. Then right now we're he's. We're kind of, I'm trying to guess how he's going to counter. Is he going to slide in? He's going to slide back. I mean, even though I'm the one pressing him, his, uh, he's doing a good job dictating the uh, the distance. And right here, I do a great job. I guess, yeah. I guess he was coming in, so I, sh I, I was creeping and creeping and creeping and then threw a short crescent kick because his defense isn't to counter really in place. It's to either go back or to come in. And this one, in this instance, I guess he was coming in and guessed right.
Ooh, that was actually really bad. Look at my footwork here. I like stand most of the side and I just, my feet come together. <laughs> That's terrible. Punch, punch, punch. Ah, that was a good back kick. So they did a good job reading that um, my left leg off the line kind of goes without motion, I guess. And overall, he does a good job spinning throughout this match. And it seems like he's able to time when I'm going to throw. And I wasn't able, I haven't watched my match enough to know what my giveaways are. And uh, I'm retired from fighting now, so I could also not really care that much because I'm not going to about to go work, go work on it. Um, I think the argument here is for two points. Yeah, what you get. Trying to find a way in for the punch. I believe at this point in the game, my coach was telling me to punch because they're probably going to score punches. So I'm looking for the punch. Apparently, they're also not calling leg checking that much yet. A lot of leg checking back and forth from both of us. He's got me there, actually. How did he almost get me? So it seems like, in I would, I'd say almost his experience, but his um, coaching staff is pretty good. And so in the first round, his defense is either out or in. That's it. He's either out or in this time not much exchange not much going on there but in this exchange what's happening is he's starting to fight me on the spot so either i'm kicking and he's spinning or i'm kicking and he's just out of the way and then he's starting to counter so he's he did a great job in the first round hiding what his defense is so now i'm going to the second round and uh i have to fight him kind of blind and yeah essentially you have to fight him kind of blind because now he's kept his traps hidden until the second round, so now I have to kind of wade through darkness going through my second round to make sure that I can still launch proper attacks and keep on the offensive without getting set up. A great job here um, by the coaching staff or or by him and his experience to keep keep that D hidden. I think a change target would have been great here. Oh, okay. Well, good job for me to blitz. I also want to say to switch legs and then attack because it's a different look. I think I'm still trying to guess what kind of defense he's sitting on. What holding? Okay. It might be because I'm I'm on a uh, home turf, but take it when you can take it, right? This is your home. Sorry about this, guys. I don't have premium. I think at this point I'm trying to bait him into short short doubles. Um, one of my weapons I don't use very often is a short, quick double. I th yeah, and I really think this is a starting home court sinking in a little bit. Nice try on his end. So this was a good try because well, one, he just reset, right? So one is a little bit of a reset. And, um, well, I guess not really. We kind of sank into the game a little bit. But he hasn't really launched that many attacks, and all of his attacks have been short and cuts. So a lot of my defense subconscious, what he's been kind of drilling to me subconsciously, is a lot of the kicks are coming from my uh, shoulder and down. So my eyes are, and my covers are down here by my body. And after almost two rounds, um, that's conditionally where my head is. And it's not something I'm consciously doing. It's just like all the attacks have been down here for the most part. So that's where I'm subconsciously probably going to guard. So him going for the axe kick here is a really good adjustment. Uh, I'm just lucky that my training partner is three divisions lighter than me. So, you know, I was able to see that. Oh, there's a tight double. 
After you score your punch, guys, don't don't celebrate. Make sure that action has really stopped. We're just trying to wait out the rest of the match. Uh, tried. So here I'm going for the headshot because he's at the edge and he's a little bit jittery. At this point in my career, I'm really favoring this um, cut short to the body and face. Um, and I think I, I like that move because if people came in on me, then um, my foot was in the way. So it's kind of hard to score because, you know, there's a, there's a giant object in the middle now. So you have to get around that. And two, if they stayed in place, I could flick. And if three, they did move back, then my my leg is um, chambered. So it acts almost as a shield. Uh, so that's something if you guys get good at like your skip or now everyone just kind of flicks but if you do a fast kick and you hold it hold that knee up and try and flick to the face it kind of serves multiple purposes so you can take that in your game if you want doesn't matter to me third round so third round i believe my coach had told me um keep trying to look for the punch um i believe there may have been a call to kick backside more because he knows my left back leg is coming um but that i don't remember um I don't really remember too much. This was like five years ago. But if I were to advise to myself now, I would say, I would almost say maybe fight him close stance for a little bit and see what he reacts. Poke with your left leg a little bit more. And um, yeah, I'd kind of, I feel like I'd need to investigate a little bit more from close stance with my left leg. What other weapons he's sitting on. And then do that maybe first 20, 30 seconds. Then... Maybe I can switch and try and play that is he coming in or is he coming out game uh, with mixing with the headshots. On his part. Oh, one of the calls may have also been, um, I think I think I remember um, Coach Kitts telling me that a lot of his attacks are coming from his right. So if I want to set up this back kick, that's where it came up. I don't, I generally, back kick is not a reactionary kick for me. It's something I have to think about before time, beforehand and be looking for something. So uh, this back kick is not something I would have uh, credited myself like, oh yeah, I just drilled that a lot. So that's what comes out when people attack me open side. My go-to generally when people attack me open side was to flick my front leg up. So me going for this back kick here was probably the coach's call. Too bad I didn't score though. Something I think I should do more. Oh well, I'm kind of going to it here, but at this point I'm I'm sitting and waiting. And what I coach when I tell other people and when I'm looking at other fights. People who win championships stay on offensive pressure. So something that I could maybe fix on myself here is maintain offensive pressure, but understand he's going to be coming in a lot so I can mix in more headshots. Versus now, it's I'm a little bit more in place. I'm not taking the ground as much as I was. And uh, it's allowing him to throw attacks that he wants to attack with no pressure. I'm like playing too scared almost, if that makes sense. Like I'm still throwing kicks. But I'm not. I'm playing more conservatively than I believe I should be playing at this point. So short head kicks, short head kicks, short head kicks. Like mix in some short head kicks, maintain the offensive pressure. What? What? On ref. Happened with the sensor, I think. I think something happened with the sensor. And so a lot of my attacks are going to his backside now because I don't want that spin to come out. Well, I think the last two or three. Um, what I could do better is I need to mix in some shorter head kicks with his guessing. Uh, because he's coming in and I'm kicking short to adjust for it. 
but it's not punishing him enough. So if I were to start mixing in some outing crescent kicks like I did in the first one where he slid in and blitz and I did a crescent kick, uh, it may force him to do another um, to do a different reaction versus him sliding in for free and jamming up my attacks for free. And I got to change target. So I keep doing this back leg left, and he doesn't have an answer for it, which is good on my end, but I'm not scoring. And it's been like the fifth or sixth off the line back leg left. So if I were to tell myself right now, I need to start changing this target to either the body flip face or straight to the face sometimes. Because this kick to the body works sometimes, and he doesn't have an answer, which is great, but it's not scoring. So... I need to use that same variable and change the look so I can get some points somewhere else. Uh, on his end. So right now I'm trying to um, I'm trying to maintain offensive pressure. At this point in the game, I believe I'm trying to maintain the offensive pressure, but I'm also just eating out the clock. I mean, there's 30 seconds until I'm moving on to I believe Kazakhstan, and I've in my head I've fought Kazakhstan. I've watched his tapes. I know when he's gonna do throw that left leg. I know when the out. I know when most probably that um, act out in is coming. But at this point, there's 34 seconds left between me and um, Kazakhstan. So I'm trying to just eat the clock. By maintain and maintain offensive pressure. Um, I think at this point, also my coach is telling me to start, or not yet. No, that's later. He tells me to to kind of hold my lead and back up. On this one, yeah, that was unfortunate. That one actually made made some contact at the back of the headgear, but at this stage where this is one of the first tournaments they use it so the sensor was actually too strong was like stronger than what it is now um so it didn't score but you know tough bricks i also got a bunch of kyungas for free so is what it is oh that's where so this is where i no no so i was correct this is where my coach was after that axe kick that's where my coach is telling me to back off stay on d and one of the reasons um, what I was, I guess what kind of upsets me is this is where I feel like I lost it because I have a, I had, when I'm growing up here in the U S I had a great coach, um, John Drath, and he um, could throw really, really nasty not bonds, like really, really good not bonds. And so subconsciously, like I'm trained that if I see someone spin like this, I kick, I generally kick into a spin. I either clinch or I'm kicking into the spin. And when I saw him spin, I remember thinking I'm supposed to go in, but then my coach, um, who, I mean, granted, like it's generally a good thing to, if you're 24 seconds to your next round of the Olympic qualifier, yeah, like you want to start defending your lead a little bit. You're up by six or you're up by three. Uh, my coach was telling me to back up, and instead of doing what I thought was correct instinctually, I um, I hesitated and I went backwards, and then he ends up landing at the snot of bottom. But I mean, I I kind of throw it, but it's super late. Generally, if I see a spin here, well, trying to reset, tries to go for the double right there, right when I see this. And I see that position. Mike, I mean, John Drath fought great. And um, I know that after a kick, if it's overshot like this, a Nautabon is coming. And so generally from here, uh, what I'm trying to express is like my instinct was is normally to kick or to slide in. Like it's one of those two. I'm going forward and I'm either and I'm throwing my and generally I'm throwing my foot into the backside here. Into your into your flank. So that way, when you do spin and this leg comes up, my leg is occupying this middle space and it's going to be super hard for you to score, right? But this is a point where I feel I doubted myself and this is what cost me the Olympics was this 
this situation right here where I didn't trust my former training, my former experience. And uh, and he scores. So at this point, it's 3-3, three, three, or it's 6, sorry, 6-6. Six, six, he gets the 2. Um, I think I try and sneak one point out here, but don't make it. Yeah. I was kind of hoping I could um, sneak it out right there, but no go. Oh, no, sorry. There's like eight seconds here. I just trying to get the point to score. So the call by um, the coach here was to punch. And um, I was told by other people, you know, if you punch, they're going to score. And, you know, of course, like home country, there's a bunch of coaches around. Everyone's saying, like, land the punch, land the punch. So I'm going in thinking, okay, let's land the punch. Because sudden death is kind of a weird situation, right? It's like they know, essentially, they know your whole game plan. You know their whole game plan. And it's kind of like, which of my weapons are you are, are am i going to try and implement here versus which of his weapons is he going to implement versus like how do i counter that like you have essentially like one chance to make a play um and if it's blown in the first cover then you're fighting the rest of the match blind essentially especially if he's still holding on to whatever the adjustment was if he can successfully defend what you're trying to throw then you're fighting blind so you don't want to give it up too soon um anyway the, the coach uh my the advice given to me was to punch because they're trying to score a punch so i'm trying like this match, I'm trying to get in a situation where a punch might maybe might, might happen. Um, besides that, I think I'm supposed to lift, kick, and then kick and flick. So kick, down it up right away is the second advice. So one of those two, that's it. There. I don't know why the name's changed at the top. It's not... It's not butch yet. That's it. That's the Olympic dream done for me. Um, so, yeah. Thanks, you guys, for watching. I apologize about the quality. Uh, so, if I were to coach myself back in... I mean, I obviously, I fight some fights after this. But if I were to coach myself back here in the qualification, um, I did an okay job guessing about where this guy's defense was i think changing targets with my left would have been pretty beneficial um some short mixing and some short head kicks into my offensive press would have also been beneficial and then like i was stressing earlier um trusting my gut when i saw the spin uh i feel like would have made the difference this match um pack uh, palestine here ends up losing to kazakhstan who i was scouting before and then kazakhstan loses to um, send from China, but because it's the qualifications, Kazakhstan versus uh, Kazakhstan and China in the finals, both of those guys end up going to the Olympics. Um, the hard part here is watching Palestine watch, or sir, I guess he's not really from Palestine, Turkey here, uh, lose to Kazakhstan and watching Kazakhstan essentially use the entire gameplay that I've been watching. Like, this is where his left comes out, this is where the out is going to happen. And knowing that if I had just fought Kazakhstan or if I had taken the time to actually scout this guy, um, you know, I could have been there. But, oh, well, that's life, man. And it happens. And at the end of the day, my goal for Taekwondo was to, um, I guess if I really got down to the specifics of my goal, it wasn't so much, it was to go in the Olympics because that's for athlete, right? That's, that's the goal. Um, but more than that, I wanted to compete at, compete against the best of the world at a high level. And um, this guy, I mean, I fought this guy to sudden death. Um, I had no idea his credentials, so uh, that was pretty cool. And then um, two days later, I ended up fighting Dmitry Shokin, who is, I think, the two-time world champion um, from Uzbekistan for heavyweight. And um, I lead him, actually, the whole match until the last 13 seconds when he throws a back kick and scores. So, all in all, uh, I didn't go to the Olympics, but I did get to fight the best in the world and hold my own against them. And so I, whenever I look back at my career, it's like, yeah, it could have been really cool if I went and had that all the title with a check mark. Um, but I think I did all right, especially as a kid who like didn't do well in Taekwondo growing up, man. Like when I was, uh, excuse you guys can turn off the video, but my, um, 
when I was gr growing up in Taekwondo, like, I was not good. I was, I started sparring at the age of six, and I wasn't good until I was 12. Like, I got the crap beat out of me for a long, long time until I got okay. Um, and it was through the help of my dad and a lot of mentors who essentially never gave up on me um, that kept honing my skills uh, until the point where you're one of the two males chosen for the qualifier. And so it was me or, or uh, my teammate Butch, and those we were the Olympic hopes for this year. Um, but anyway, guys, I hope you guys have happy holidays. Um, I'm not going to be uploading one next week because that is um, New Year's, and so I'm going to be taking that off. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys uh, this gives you guys some tips on how to look back at your own matches. And, um, yes, yeah, stay safe, and see you guys next time.